Hey guys, it's Scott with the No Budget Homestead. But today we're doing the garage edition. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, I've been having a couple of uh, codes being thrown on my Jeep. And we're trying to try and fix a P2004, which is the left rear wheel speed sensor. And that looks something like this. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and see about replacing it and everything. I thought I'd take you guys along. Uh, I don't see a whole lot of vids out there of people working on uh, a Jeep. We have a 2009 Jeep Patriot. And we're going to save a ton of money today by installing this ourselves. And I'll tell you where I got it. I got it online at a really good price. And I'll share that with you guys later too, okay? Alright, so let's get busy. Ready? All right, first thing we're going to do is we have to uh, remove the uh, spare tire from the back of the uh, Jeep along with the soundproofing liner underneath the spare tire and also a little tunnel cover. And I'll show you guys that. Okay, one well, of the first things we want to do is remove the cover here and the spare tire, okay? And that snaps right out. All right, first of all, what we need to do is remove the spare tire from this and everything and anything coming trying to come through. <laughs> uh, real quick word on this. Why manufacturers use these little donuts? Well, I know why. They just want to save some money and everything. Uh, to me, it's just kind of pointless. But I found out a full-size spare won't fit in the, uh, the wheel well here. So, you know, it is what it is. I've never had to use it, thank goodness but uh, we got it. So let's go ahead and get this out of the way. Next we gotta remove the cover. I've already kind of loosened it a bit. I mean the wheel liner where the spare tire is. There you go. All right, here we go. All right, put that over there a little bit. Right over there. Okay, now we got an area where hey we guys. can work. What we need to do is after we removed all this stuff, this here is one of the uh, the plugs, which is this plug right here on the new one. We got to remove that plug, and you see where that black wire kind of goes down right there. That goes into a little rubber stopper like this. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and disconnect that and kind of pull it out. And uh, after we pull it out, we'll have to feed this one from the bottom up to the hole that's there. Okay? But first, we need to jack up the car. So let's All right, do now that. little man is going to go about uh, jacking up the Jeep. So he's going to help out, and then we're going to put a jack stand underneath there. Okay, you're doing it the hard way. You just bend it and twist it. Okay, now you're letting it down. There you go. Pull across. Yep, that's it. You get into a good rhythm. Very good, you're doing a good job. Little man has helped us before when we uh, had to take the wheels off for doing the brakes. Now this 09G Patriot is a G Patriot Sport. It has front disc and rear drum. Front disc brakes are a pleasure to replace. The rear, well, I can't use the language on this video, but it, it, it's a pain in the butt, to put it lightly. Alright guys, we're now under the Jeep. And what I want to do is show you that bolt right here that's highlighting the light. That's the one we got to loosen because that's where the sensor is. I'm trying to get you guys some good shots here. It does look a little fuzzy. But uh, that's the buddy right there. Let's see if I can show you with the laser pointer. That bolt right there. That's the bolt that we got to remove right there. That's that little rubber stopper we got to no. do. Notice okay. that wire, black wire that comes around. That wire also, let's see here. Sorry for the shakiness, guys, but this is hard to do. 
that bolt right that there. Bolt right there. It's kind of center of the screen. That's the one we got to remove also because that's a little bracket that holds the wire. Okay, let me go ahead and get our uh, socket set, and we'll see about getting this done. All right, guys, we're back in the trunk here on the back of the Jeep, and uh, I just want to show you the clip. Clip here. I went ahead and pulled uh, this little piece out of that hole right here because uh, it was clipped on right right here and you pull this piece out okay I know it looked like it slid right out real nicely but you got this red push clamp here gotta make sure you push that down kind of pull it out a bit and that helps loosen this end it will take a little wiggling to get it out but it's out so we're just gonna take this side it's part of the wiring harness, put it aside. And now this one here, we need to kind of poke through that uh, hole that we saw. Sorry for the shaking camera. Uh, put right there. That little, uh, boy, well, maybe the uh, pointer. Laser pointer will help some. Okay, that bad boy right there. We gotta push that through now. Okay, all right. Here we go. Okay, here, oh, here we go. We got it popped out, and so now we have to bring it all the way around and back down. So here we okay, go. Okay, now we need to loosen this bolt. Uh, it takes a half inch socket. So we're going to go and get that loosened. Alright guys, we ran into a little snag. Uh, this is why I do things myself, or I try to as much as possible so I can learn something. Take the tire off first. <laughs> you can see things a lot better, and reach things better, and remove things a lot better. So that's what I'm doing now. Uh, and we'll go ahead and uh, remove the tire. And then uh, I'll be able to mount this thing a lot easier. I don't know why I didn't think of that before, especially when I had you guys underneath there with me looking at it. Uh, so, go figure. Live and learn though, right? And that's why we like to homestead as much as pos possible so that we can learn things and do it ourselves. So, Okay, because one of the things I wanted to show you is right here. I don't know if you guys can see it. I'm going to bring you in a little closer. Right here is where one of the brackets were. I removed it with the tire on, and then I realized, okay, dummy, take the tire off, and you can reach it a lot better. And, yes, I can. So, all right. Uh, Okay, Let me guys, show what else I'm doing, okay? That bolt right here is a 10 millimeter, which makes absolutely no sense to me. Seeing the other two bolts I had to remove were half inch. And it seems to be real easy to get off. So take that off. And again, guys, yeah, take that wheel off when you're doing something like this. I don't know what the heck I was thinking, but I oh, actually I do know what I was thinking. Absolutely nothing. Okay, that's a 10 millimeter bolt. The other two bolts I took off were uh, half inch, so go figure. All right, now I'm gonna try and wiggle this 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 thing loose a bit. I'm gonna try and wiggle this this bolt loose here, and it should slide right out and I emphasize the word should in finger quote finger quotes see how it goes okay 
I pulled it straight out. Came out real easy. Okay, now let me uh, pull this out. We'll take a closer look at it. All right, guys. There it is. Yeah, let me get some of that mess out of the way. That's your left rear wheel speed sensor. Little itty bitty thing there, and I don't see anything wrong with it, but it's not working, so I'm going to replace it. Alrighty. So now, compare the two, two ends. That's the old one, and that's the new one. A little bit different. I hope it fits. It did say direct fit, so we shall see, okay? Right, okay guys, there's the new one in. It screwed in real nicely, fit in there perfectly, even though it kind of looked a little different, but uh, it all seemed to fit in there really well. Now I'm going to go ahead and try and put all the brackets back where they should be and feed it through and I'll uh, be back. I got one of the other bolts on there. I thought the bracket on the other bolt that's like this here, it was a little short because I was trying to put it right here. Well, it wasn't the one that's supposed to go there and I almost came close to stripping the wire there, which I'm glad I didn't do. But now uh, I got this. There we go. Okay, you ain't gonna stay, are you? Okay, let's get the bad boy started. Okay, and I did kind of lie to you guys about the half inch bolt. Uh, it's actually 13 millimeters, which fits a lot better on there. Because uh, I almost stripped the bolt while the other bolt while putting it in, and then I realized it wasn't all the way on the bolt, so that's my bad. So hopefully I'll be able to make notations as I do this. So. But uh, so far these parts are going really well. It's a lot better than I expected. Because I don't know about you guys, but sometimes when you get in the middle of trying to work on your own vehicle, because A, uh, just make that a little tight. You work on your own vehicle, sometimes it takes a heck of a lot longer than even you figure it would. Because if something can go wrong, it will. It will. Oh, yes, it okay. will. I'm about ready to feed it up and this wire here or this end here has got to go right into that hole okay let's not forget that bracket there and we'll feed everything through that little hole right there that rubber stopper in there much better okay you see the plugs here there's a little clip right there see that little nub right there that goes in the top part kind of lines up with the red clip here and we push it all the way in if you heard that click push that red tab in and it's locked in there now go back to this little piece and you push that it's got a little clip right here take that and push it all okay it clicked in and then that goes in that little hole right there so we can kind of put in like that and twist all right put this back on here because I took that off now it looks like it's all connected. All right, well that's done. Now I'm gonna put everything back together. Hey guys, 
All right, I uh, went ahead and cleaned everything up, put everything back in the car that needed to be done. I'm now sitting in my uh, driveway with the engine running, and you see the ABS light, the ESP BAS light, and the little car with the skid marks. Uh, all those are being thrown because of that uh, left rear wheel speed sensor. Okay, and you notice I also have a check engine light, which has to do with a manifold issue and or and possibly a va evaporation system leak. But I'll get to those later. So what I'm going to do right now is I have an ODB2 reader in the car right now and it uses my uh, iPhone. So it's a item called Blue Driver. Here, let me show you here. Blue Driver right there. Okay, right, I'm trying to get rid of the glare here, guys. Sorry. Uh, yeah, so there it is, blue driver. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click the magnifying glass that says uh, read codes. Okay. I'm sorry for the shakiness, guys. Uh, let's go with all system modules. And it's scanning. Now this will take... Uh, still scanning. That's kind of what it looks like when it's scanning. Oh, I just got a beep, which means it's checking out the brake light blinks that means it's still scanning it's checking the braking system still scanning it's about half done okay we'll wait for the results it's done all the scans and if you notice we got uh, intake manifold runner control stuck open bank one which is one I need to work on uh, but the one I'm concerned about is the anti-lock speed sensor Oops. left rear wheel speed sensor okay Okay, when I hit clear codes, I get clear pending and confirm codes only, clear enhanced codes, codes only, clear all codes. I'm going to clear all codes because I know the other ones will come back. Okay, and while it's clearing, let's see what it does. Right now we're at 10% uh, clearing the codes. Thirty percent. Okay, look like it cleared the. ABS codes at around 50%. Should be clearing the uh, check engine light here for a minute. In a minute. Or it may just leave it there because it notices that it's still something that has a problem. Okay, we're down to 70% of it clearing the codes. So uh, I don't know if that's going to help. That's too much glare. Sorry, guys. And this is a Blue Driver ODB2 reader that I'm using. It uses Bluetooth and connects up to any Android or iOS device. The software is free, but you need the code reader. And I'm going to do a little review on that. I've been using it for about a month, about a month now, and uh, I'm going to do a little review on it and let you guys okay. know how it goes. 
zero confirm uh, zero confirmed trouble codes, zero pending trouble codes, zero permanent trouble codes. Which means it cleared all the ones that it could, but if we look here, we still see the check engine light. All right, we're gonna do a quick little drive and see what happens. Make sure that these codes stay hey cleared, okay? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we uh, reset the codes on the Jeep and uh, we're taking a, little, taking a little drive. Just thought I'd pull over and let you guys know that as we're driving down the road, I did another code read and we only got one one code. Yeah, buddy. All right, well, it's satisfactory. I get a lot of satisfaction when I'm able to save a bundle and get stuff fixed on my own vehicle. So uh, anything I can do to save money, because, uh, you know, we don't have a budget, so <laughs> that's why we're the no budget homestead. But uh, anyways, you guys tell me what you think about this video. Uh, I am going to do a review on the uh, ODB2 reader and let you guys know what I think of that and everything. Uh, but it's a wonderful thing, knowing, wonderful feeling of satisfaction knowing that we got it done. Little man helped out. Uh, so it was a family effort, and I'm glad everything's going well. So uh, you guys tell me what you think. Put, put the comments down below. Uh, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. And share and like our videos and subscribe if you haven't already. You know, we really appreciate that. Kind of let us know what, what you think of it. Uh, so this is, you know, the No Budget Homestead Garage saying bye-bye until we see you on the next one. So you guys have a simply unbelievable day, and God bless you. Bye. Bye. Man, I'm all high. This is the highest I've ever sat down on the Jeep before. You don't see nothing.